Good morning, members, and welcome to this final. Sorry, two seconds. Good morning, members, and welcome to this final meeting of the Finance, Procurement and Transformation Committee of this Council. Um, this meeting is being live streamed and recorded and will be, be made available for viewing through our Council's website. Can I remind members to follow the good practice guidance, which includes muting microphones and switching off videos when you're not addressing the meeting? Um, for those of you who are attending virtually, can you, um, if you wish to contribute on any item, could you write speak in the Teams chat function and you'll be invited to speak in order about new issues? Should your question or issue be raised by a previous speaker, please withdraw your request so that we can deal with the business as efficiently as possible. The usual, sta usual standing orders apply, including that any votes will be undertaken by roll call. We have several important reports to consider today and anticipate we'll deal with them in our usual efficient manner. As notified, two committee members have agreed to take an urgent item of business at the end of the agenda, uh, and this paper has been circulated to members. Um, item number one is sur surrounding apologies and uh, chair's approval of remote participation. Nick, can you provide the surrounding and any apologies, please? Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I haven't been advised of any apologies. In the chamber um, today, we have councillors Wilson, the chair, um, councillors Nicholson, Sloan and Thompson, and um, joining us remotely on Teams, we have councillor Hagman, the vice chair, councillors Brody, Davidson, Fairburn, Johnston, Lever, McClell, um, not Mc McKee, McGregor Ma and Maitland. Um, thank you, Chair. So that's. I'm, I'm here too. Thank you, Leader. Okay. Um, and I um, approve members' remote participation. Item number two is there any declarations of interest? Uh, Katie? Morning, Chair. Thank you. Um, yes, just to add to the um, to the sergeant and apologies. I, I believe John Campbell is also an apology if he's not online. I can't see, but he had contact me to submit that. Um, in terms of interest, Chair, if I can just declare an interest in item twelve um, as the elected member that sits in the partnership board, I'll sit out of that agenda item. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Chairman. Item 15, WD Community Initiative Community Asset Transfer. Uh, I have attended meetings of the uh, steering group for this Community Asset Transfer, however, only in an advisory capacity and have not taken part in any decision making in relation to the application. Uh, additionally, I am the Council's representative to WD Community Initiative. However, that is again uh, a, a, an advisory stroke observer um, uh, role rather than a decision making one. Um, and therefore, while declaring interests, would intend to participate in the item. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Um, item number three is minutes of the previous meeting on the 27th of January. Are we happy to approve the minutes of the 27th of January? Okay. Item number four is the um, Local Authority COVID Economy Recovery Fund um, use of the Dumfries and Galway allocation for 2022-23. This report presents us with proposals for the use of additional funding announced in the last few weeks. The report outlines the policy intent of the funding agreed between Scottish Government and COSLA and the five principles for the use of the funding, which focuses on supporting local economic recovery and the cost of living impacts on low-income households. Our Council has been allocated £2.292 million of funding to be spent in the upcoming year, and Mark Malloy is here to assist members with any questions. Is there any members who wish to come in um, on this item? Tommy? Thanks very much, Chair. The, I, mean, I welcome the £2.29 million, and I welcome the way it has been allocated. I think it's going to, it's going to be much needed. But what I've got to ask is when, when, we, when, when we turn the page and we go to the approximately three, £350. Pounds to three Sorry, two seconds, Tommy. Mark, could you be able to mute your microphone? On you go, Tommy. Right. Uh, the, uh, approximately 3,600 people who have previously received a, a crisis grant under the Community Care Grant. Now, at the beginning, uh, or 
from the start of the last financial year, in the first nine months, there was over 5,000 applications for this uh, fund. So I just want to have, do, do we have any plan in place to take care of the, the what's going to be a massive shortfall? I think we'd all agree that this, this next incoming year is going to be a lot worse than the, the financial year we've just passed. And have we got sort of contingency plans to deal with this and make, make sure that we're... I mean, I wouldn't like to think that when this council goes out, and I'm sure the, the administration wouldn't like to think that when they, when they leave, they're going to leave the, their taxpayers in abject poverty. And I hope that's not the case, and I'm, I'm sure you hope it's not the case. Thanks, Jim. No, no, certainly, Tommy. I think on uh, you raise some some valid points, and I think clearly we're we're utilising this fund, and we've got a number of um, budgets in place to support um, people across Dunfermline and Galway to who are in poverty. And this is an administration that has um, repeatedly put in support for families. I think it's clear that the next financial year is going to be worse for families, um, and I think that this really needs to be the beginning of the support that we provide families, not the end. Um, and I certainly hope that, that the new council, when it's elected, um, will continue to look at the ways in which we can support. Um, Mark, could you come in on the particular question that Tommy had? Yeah, th thanks, Chair, and, and thanks, Councillor Sloan. In terms of the, the numbers that this report will cover all those individuals who have received support in 21-22, so up to the 31st of March uh, in the next few days. So it is based on the current financial year, and the numbers that Councillor Sloan has referred to is the number of applications, uh, where what we are targeting here is the number of individual people, which is where the 3,600 comes from. And I can also provide members with the reassurance that the Poverty and Inequalities Partnership uh, is, is uh, taking a very proactive role in ensuring that you know all available supports are there uh, for individuals who need that within the region. Okay, thank you for that. I have no other members who wish to come in, so uh, I will move to the recommendations. Are we happy to um, note one, agree to, and note three on block? Thank you. Um, sorry. Um, Gail and Jane, I see you've came through as I was on the recommendations. Was it a point on the recommendations? No, you just seem to be pressing the through. I'm waiting on March. What's that? Sorry, Gail, we can't hear you. I'm saying you seem to be rushing us through a wee bit. I was waiting on the response to Councillor Sloan's um, questions from Mark Malloy before I intervened. Sorry. OK, I, I mean, Tommy... And, and Mark had spoken for, for a couple of minutes and nobody had indicated they want to speak. Um, I have just agreed, we have just taken the recommendations. Jane, was your point on the recommendations? No, Chairman, um, I think it's possible to the slight delay um, since I had definitely typed in my requirement to speak before you started on the recommendations, but that's probably the vagaries of technology. Um, it's No, it's not an issue on that, that it's a question about sustainability um, with respect to care call. Um, OK, Mark, do you feel that you could answer that question? And in future, I'll, I'll try and leave a little bit longer um, if, the, if there does appear to be a bit of a delay. Thanks, Chair, and thanks, Councillor Maitland. In terms of care call, what this is proposing is to support those who are uh, expressing the, the need at this point in time. So we do appreciate that there is other discussions going on around how we support people in the longer term, whether that be in care call or whether it be in other areas. But what we felt was important at this point was to bring a report to members that provided immediate support for those who are deregistering from care call at this point in time uh, because of the cost element of it. I understand, and I very much welcome um, that approach. If you think about the cost of actually supporting somebody, uh, people going in, as opposed to the care call costs, um, I think it's really important that we do put that in. But as I say, it's an issue about it going forward and uh, sustainability. So I hope that's worked in, Chairman. Okay, thank you. 
Um, so we have taken the, the recommendations for item four. I will move on to um, item five, um, and that is the um, impact of inflationary cost increases on council budgets. Members are updated on the impact of recent inflationary pressures currently being experienced by the council, and outlines proposals for our consideration to address the current cost increases over the upcoming period. The report seeks our agreement to delegate to the Interim Chief Executive and Head of Finance and Procurement to address the impact of current inflationary pressures on Council services within defined parameters. These parameters would include delegation on addressing budgets, pressures being exercised within the Council's already agreed budget. Uh, Paul Garrett and Stephen White are here to assist members on any questions. Is there any members who wish to come in? Tommy. Thanks very much, Chair. It's just a question on what monies will be available to the, the delegated peoples. Do we, do we know what kind of money we're talking about? Uh, yep, yeah, Paul will be able to answer that. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Yes, at uh, paragraphs 3, 9 and 3, 10 of the report, we're outlining the, the funding that these delegated authorities would, ex would be exercised within it's, it's the 1.5 million that was set aside within the recently agreed budget specifically for inflationary pressures plus the the additional provision that was made available for budget pressures that may arise during the course of the year so the, the, the delegations be exercised wholly within those amounts that are reflected in the report okay any other members who wish to come in uh, jane Thank you. Um, yes, this is, is just a very quick question with respect to releasing information uh, to those not in the administration, um, Chairman. And I just wonder um, if it would be um, possible that the group leaders should be informed if there are any changes. I'm looking at um, 312. It's for the fullest understanding right across the, uh, the, the Council. Yeah, yeah, I mean, certainly in, for the period up until the election, I'm more than happy to ensure that group leaders are informed. Um, unfortunately, um, I can't talk for after the election, but hopefully that gives you some reassurance, Jane. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Nope. Uh, I will therefore move to the recommendations. Are we happy to note one and agree to on block? Take that as a yes. Um, item number six is the facilities team request for funding of a uh, distribution team. This report asks members to consider a request from the Economy Resources Committee for the allocation of funding required to support the short extension of the Solution Centre's distribution team up until the end of June 2022. Alan Mawson is here to assist members with any questions. Is there any members who wish to come in on this report? I am not seeing anyone wish to come in. So I will move to the recommendations, and that is that we agree the request from Economy Resources Committee to allocate funding of up to £40,000. We're happy to agree. Okay. Um, Item number seven is cloud technology investment. Members are provided with an overview of the benefits to our council in adopting cloud technology, the current progress in doing so, and seeks our agreement to invest through the change fund to achieve future savings and benefits for the council. James Pocock and Mike Shepler are here to assist members with any questions, um, and I will open up to member debate. Is there any members who wish to come in? I'm not seeing anybody who wishes to come in, so I will move to the recommendations. Are we happy to note one, two, three, and five and agree for Stephen? Chair, I'm in the ridiculous situation where I'm here in council chamber. I can't connect to Teams and I can't access my modern Gov documents because I can't connect to either the elected members or the uh, um, mobile Wi-Fi networks for some reason. Um, so while it might be opportune that these two members of staff are on the call. Is there any reason 
why this would be, and can, is there any way we can quickly remove this absurdity? Because uh, otherwise I'll have to maybe take uh, Ronnie's example and get printed papers, because um, effectively this kit is useless right now and I'm in committee. Um, is there anyone who can answer that question? I do know that when I came into the building at half eight this morning, um, I had to spend five minutes dealing with my iPad, but it is working now. Is there anyone who can help Stephen? Uh, yes, Chair, I, I can take that question. Uh, we do have a technical issue at the moment. Um, colleagues in the team are, are looking at it, and um, we'll get back to Councillor Thompson um, as soon as possible with a resolution for it, if that's okay, Chair. Chair, with your permission, I'm going to ludicrously join this meeting in the group room because I, I can participate better there than I can here. So I okay, um, me. I see that Jane wishes to make a comment and I anticipate it's probably going to be the same issue. No, no, it's not actually. I, I've answered my own question. I thank you. <laughs> oh, that, thank you very much. Okay. Um, can I just check, is there anybody on Teams who is having any issues with accessing their papers or in participating in this meeting? Okay, I'm going to take that as a no. Um, can I confirm that we are happy to note one, two, three, and five and agree four on block? Good, read. Okay, thanks, Jane. I'll, I'll take that on board and I'll try and leave as long as a pause um, as possible. Okay, item number eight is review of internal financial procedures and procurement standing orders. This report presents the sixth update on the agreed implementation plan to address the recommendations from a review of internal financial procedures and procurement standing orders. Lorna Meehan and Paul Garrett are here to assist members with any questions, um, and I will open up to member debate. Is there any members who wish to come in? I am not seeing any members wishing to come in or indeed typing. So I will move to the recommendations. Sorry, Jane, is that you wanting to come in? Yes, yes, Chairman, it was. Sorry, it does seem to be very slow. Um, um, now, what I'm looking at here, maybe um, it's actually possibly better for the next um, um, item. It, it's about the level of compliance. Um, so we've got 21 million spend was identified as non-compliant um, in November, and we're pretty much at the same um, issue now. I, I appreciate probably this could be answered in the next um, 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 meeting, in uh, the next um, item, but um, really, do, do we think that we are making sufficient progress in general, um, along these uh, this implementation plan. Lorna, Paul, Paul. Thanks, Chair. Yes, I uh, appreciate that in terms of the, the statistics, which which are expressed a bit in a bit more detail in the, in the following report on the agenda. We've not seen the extent of improvement that we are expecting to see going forward, but uh, obviously members have recently received a report on compliance across the Council, which was accompanied by a detailed action plan to address identified issues over the upcoming period, and we're expecting to see through the progression of that action plan that that figure will improve uh, as we go forward. Uh, but uh, that's one of the key issues that we are prioritising at the minute. And in this report that we're looking at at the minute, there's a kind of follow on in terms of the implementation plan actions that we've picked up through subsequent reports. And on uh, each quarterly procurement report that we take to the, the new FPT committee, we'll be given an update on the level of improvement in relation to that indicator. Are you happy with that answer, Jane? I, I am. Thank you very much. Um, I'm not going to turn on my video. I'm sorry. It's just being so slow. Um, 
the the other issue, if I could crave your um, indulgence, is about um, the reporting of um, contracts under twenty thousand um, pounds, and and really sort of just to get some idea um, about about those, because we're talking about a comprehensive uh, contracts register. Um, Paul, through you, Chairman, and you know the argument could be that the public wouldn't see that as comprehensive. I think somewhere, um, when it comes to the the contracts register being published, which I very much welcome, um, could there be a, an idiot's guide to um, to what is meant and uh, by comprehensive? Because people really don't understand, and they also don't fully understand. Um, the, the the legal niceties of supposedly somebody being challenged, the council being challenged for publishing information which was not supposed to be challenged, and I I only half buy that. You know, who's been challenged in the past? Now are we being over squeamish. Paul. Yep. Thanks. Uh... Thanks, Chair. I see Karen's coming in, so she's probably going to be a better place to answer this one as myself, so I'll, I'll pass over to Karen if that's OK. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Chair. Um, I think, yeah, in terms of the kind of suggestion, um, Council Maitland, for a, a sort of guide to what we mean and what's incorporated within the, 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 the contra contract register, um, I think that's a um, really helpful suggestion and absolutely something that we'll, we'll, we'll take forward and ensure is, is published alongside the contract register when it goes live um, on, on the website on the 11th of April. Um, the contracts um, register that we've developed has focused on the over 20,000 activity. Um, we haven't captured everything at this stage for under 20,000, but that's a further area that can be considered for future development. Um, obviously, that, that starts to get into quite a low transactional value, and obviously the regulatory requirements um, are, are for the kind of higher value contracts. So we're already, um, I think, through the, the recommendations, starting to open that up and provide greater transparency than we have done previously. Um, and, and, and that's where we've taken it at that sort of 20,000 threshold at the moment. Um, again, coming back on the, the, the sort of feedback around um, potential legal challenge. There's no um, legal challenge that I'm aware of, but that's also because nobody else has been publishing this level of information um, to, to, to warrant any sort of legal challenge. So um, that's certainly the advice that we've had from um, our, our internal legal colleagues um, around just in, uh, applying a degree of caution to how we present that information and ensuring we've got the appropriate consent. So um, within the updated tender documents, we're now seeking that um, consent from each of the suppliers who are below the regulated threshold um, to make them aware and get their upfront consent that we're going to publish the details of the contract as well, just to um, provide us with that consent and to mitigate that that, that legal challenge concern um, that has rightly been raised by our, our, our legal colleagues. Yes, thank you, Chairman. I, I understand what is being proposed and I, I do welcome um, what Karen is telling us. Um, Anything that makes what the council does more transparent, open to the public, can really genuinely be welcomed. So thank you. Okay, thank you. I have no other members who wish to come in, so are we happy that we have reviewed the update on the implementation plan. Yeah. Item number nine is the procurement and commissioning performance update for quarter three. This report provides an overview of the procurement activities during the third quarter of 21-22 and highlights key issues, risks and successes during this time period and provides information on forthcoming opportunities and events for local suppliers. Karen Scott and Paul Garrett are here to assist members with any questions and I will open up to member debate. Any questions from members? I'm not seeing anybody wanting to come in or typing, so I will move to the recommendations. And are we happy to note the update on the Council's procurement performance for quarter three? Okay. Yep, thank you. Item number 10 is a refresh of sustainable procurement policy and contract and supplier management policy. 
um, updated sustainable procurement and contract and supplier management policies for the Council are presented to us for approval. Both of these policies have been developed and prepared in line with this committee's review recommendations. The report summarises the main areas of update and the, and the plans and how these were developed. Subject to our approval, the rollout of training on these policies is scheduled as part of the procurement training programme. Karen Scott and Paul Garrett are here to assist members with any questions. And I will now open up to member debate. Is there any member who wishes to come in? You come in now. Uh, Ronnie. Uh, thank you, Chair. Councillor Maitland uh, mentioned in a previous item about being squeamish about uh, some of the language we use uh, within the papers. I quite agree with her about some of them, especially on page 126 of this report. There is a number of bullet points in 5.4. Now, I understand there may be some constrictions about what you can do and, and what you can't do, but I think, you know, we should be more effective in uh, the way we word things about what we would accept in a council. And one of them is, for an example, the use of fire and hire practices. It says oppose them. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, we don't accept that. We don't accept fire and hire practices, uh, you know, within any company that we uh, use. Now, I know there may be some difficulties in that, but I think throughout these bullet points, I think we could use a bit stronger uh, wording in that. Uh, Paul or Karen? Thank you. So I think the, the wording as it is came from the um, motion that was voted on in December at full council um, and it is, a, it is a direct lift um, in terms of the national guidance around what we're able to ask now in terms of fair work first but completely accept the um, recommendation um, and, and kind of point around just thinking through how we actually um, set that out in our contract documents themselves. So um, I think our evaluation criteria is absolutely somewhere that we can be a lot more direct in terms of our questioning um, to ensure that those that we are engaging with, for example, are not um, utilising fire and rehire practices. Um, so I think at a policy level, we've taken the, the, the national guidance, um, but absolutely agree um, and, and we would action um, the, 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 the suggestion there in terms of being a lot more clear um, at, at, and to the point in terms of asking the, the questions within our tender documentation itself. Gorni. Thanks very much for that. I think that's helpful. That uh, if, if it could be doing that, there are other words, you know, about in a, no inappropriate use of zero hour contracts and providing fair pay for workers. And you give an example of living wage, but I think, you know, it, it could be strengthened within that. And I understand what's happened in October, but uh, things have moved on uh, a bit since then, and even in a local level, about uh, fire and rehire practices. We've seen the outcome, we've seen the impact of that, especially within the region. And I don't think it's acceptable that we take any part in that. Tommy. Yeah, just to welcome what Ronnie said on the hire and fire. Certainly, I, I wouldn't like to think that this council would take any part in any contract uh, with the p &O line or any of its sub subsidiaries that we'd take nothing to do with. Uh, thank you. Jane? Um, Chairman, how do, how do we know who is a contract manager? Um, you know, who, how would we know about who to ask, uh, Karen? Is that going to appear in the register or anything like that? Karen? Um, it doesn't appear within the public contract register, but what we would ask is if there was a particular contract that you wish to, um, or a business wish to understand more about, if they contacted through the procurement team in the first instance, it just ensures that we can ensure kind of open um, discussion um, takes place there and includes the procurement team as well as the contract manager. Your contract manager would typically be your lead service representative who would work with the supplier on a sort of day-to-day -day basis for delivery of the contract objectives. Um, so we would just um, encourage those to um, anyone that's we, we do hold a register of everyone who's responsible for each contract. So the, the the procurement team's full version of the contract register does include that information. Um, but our intention um, with the published version is that the request would come in through the procurement team, and then we would facilitate such discussion with the appropriate contract managers as well to make sure that we're given 
open, transparent, fair and consistent information to anyone who's who's interested in any of the opportunities or existing contracts. Thank you. OK, um, I have no other member wishing a uh, jock. Oh, sorry, Chair. It's just this uh, no inappropriate use of zero hour contracts. Could we not delete that altogether? Is there such a thing as an appropriate use of zero hour contracts? It's, it's just the, the word, I, I've, I've kind of concerns about that, that should we use that at all? So no, we not just delete it. And we won't entertain zero hour contracts. I think, um, Jock, you know, to a point, I, I agree with your, your point, but I think that there will be some people, as somebody who has previously had a zero hour contract in the past, um, and found that favourable. I wonder if members would be happy to sort of change that. And, and Karen, quite happy to take your advice on this. No inappropriate use of zero hour contracts and um, encourage the use of guaranteed minimum hour contracts. Um, so I think that, you know, we're quite clearly saying that we would like to see, um, you know, a, a reduced reliance on zero hour contracts, but also sort of putting in place, you know, what. Um, sort of setting out a, a, a sort of more fairer approach for, for employees. Um, Karen, are you quite happy with that? Um, my only other circumstance that I to come back on, Chair, that has arisen in the past where we've deemed it to be an appropriate use was for consultancy type contracts where we have professionals who are perhaps semi retired and don't actually seek a number of hours, um, but they do have an employment contract. So that would be the only kind of caveat whereby we have found it to be an appropriate use. Um, and we've had consultation and direct discussion with those individuals to ensure that that suits their individual circumstances and that was deemed to be appropriate. But um, I think in terms of the, the suggested wording um, in, in relevant sectors or something, I think if we were to add wording in, in, in that basis, then that would allow us to still consider um, that sort of consultancy professional um, example as well. No, thank you for that example. Um, Ronnie? Yeah, I think uh, no zero contracts is a good way uh, unless individuals have actually asked for that on a personal basis. So I don't think we should do, uh, you know, condone any zero contracts unless they've been particularly asked for by any individuals. Okay, thank you. Um, I have no other members who wish to come in, so are we happy to approve one and two, but also yeah, to... Chair, can I, can I just ask? So, I thought Ronnie was actually moving that. that uh, sorry, if, if you let me finish, Tommy, I said agree one and two, but with the addition that Ronnie had suggested. Oh, hush, hush my mouth, uh, Chair. And, Thank you. Thank you. So, with the addition um, that, that Ronnie made on the bullet point on page 126 on fire and rehire, and the addition that I suggested um, on the bullet point in the same point in relation to zero hour contracts, are we happy to agree that? Thank you. Um, item number 11, uh, Scotland Excel Progress Review and Assessment. This report sets out findings of a Scotland Excel review and assessment based on their procurement and commercial improvement model, PSIP. This progress review and assessment was commissioned as one of the actions in response to the committee's review recommendations. Karen Scott and Paul Garrett are here to assist members with any questions, um, and I will open up to member debate. Is there any member who wishes to come in? I'm not seeing any member who wishes to come in. Um, and I think it, it's fair to say that the, the PSIP assessment, um, I think, gave a very good um, set of recommendations for the procurement team. And I think it also set out a number of strengths that um, you know I think the committee obviously welcomes. Um, and the recommendations will be implemented as detailed in the report um, over and above the, the FPT review um, that, that we carried out. Um, so, are we happy to note the findings and recommendations um, of the Scotland Excel PSIP report? Noted. Okay, thank you. Um, item number 12 is land at Underhill Dalry. This re report requests an agreement 
from a request from the Economy and Resources Committee to lease land under Hill St John's town of Dalry um, for the initial period of five years to the UNESCO biosphere for the development of an office base. This is brought to us for consideration because the lease terms recommended are for a nil consideration. Um, we are also asked to note the decision by Economy Resources Committee to a 12-month extension to the existing service level agreement between the Council and the UNESCO biosphere. Anna Johnson and Simon Fieldhouse are here to assist members with any questions, and I will open up to member debate. Is there any member who wishes to ask a question? Okay, so uh, Jock. I, I was just looking at that piece of land. Is there any restrictions going to be put on it? It, it might it might be land that could be looked on as suitable for housing and that sort of thing. Is there any restrictions that we, we would want to put on it? Um, Simon and Anna. I think the land has been deemed already surplus to requirement by the council. Okay, thank you for that, Anna. Um, I will move to the recommendations. Um, are we happy to, first of all, agree to the lease um, and to delegate um, the terms to be agreed by the property and estates programme manager and to note to unblock? Okay, thank you very much. Um, can somebody just message Katie to inform her that we've finished agenda item 12? Thank you. Um, Agenda item 13 is licensed to occupy Lorburn Hall, Dumfries. This report, avides, this report advises us of a request by the electric theatre company, The Big Burn Supper, to occupy the Lorburn Hall in Dumfries for a fixed period and at a nil rent. The context and background to the request is outlined in the report, and we are also advised of the recommendation of the Nisdale Area Committee to grant a licence to occupy. Before I move to discussion, um, can I ask officers to provide a verbal update on the consideration of this item at Communities Committee as referred to as in, in Recommendation 2.3? Paul? Uh, thank you, Chair, and through you, um, I can advise members that the, community co the Communities Committee um, approved um, to recommend to this committee that the licence is granted. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Paul. Paul and Nick are here to assist members with any questions, um, and I'll bring in Elaine. Not so much a, a question, really, just more a comment that the area committee was keen that the licence ran until February 2023 rather than September this year, as was originally proposed, uh, so that they would uh, have occupation during the period of next year's Big Burn Supper, which hopefully... Uh, will be able to be the sort of event it used to be rather than, uh, you know, there have been obviously been problems with COVID over the last few years and uh, not being able to have the type of festival they normally did in the winter period. So uh, I'm just very pleased that that was uh, accepted by the Nathalie Area Committee and that uh, it's in the recommendations today. I think it's important that they actually get use of the Lower Burn Hall until after Big Burn Supper next year. Thanks. OK, thank you for that, Elaine. Um, I have no other members wishing to come in, so I will move to the recommendations. Um, are we happy to agree one, note two, agree three, and note and agree four on block? Agreed. Thank you. Uh, item number 14 is the Nith Valley Leaf Trust Community Asset Transfer Request. Um, this the report provide, presents to members a Stage 2 asset transfer application from Nith Valley Leaf Trust and a business plan for the transfer of Closeburn School playing field under the Community Empowerment Act Scotland 2015. Colin Freeman is here to assist members with any questions eh, and I will open up to member debate. Is there any questions from members? Uh, I'm not seeing any questions from members. 
Um, I think this was a, a very positive um, cat transfer request and um, I believe that um, of importance to the Nistel Area Committee was that um, education were able to um, retain um, sort of free access and that is included within the report. So uh, I will move to the recommendations and I will propose option one. Uh, and therefore I would ask our um, members happy to consider one, note two, consider three, note four, agree five, and consider six on the basis that we are going to go with option one in the report. Good. Members happy with that? Thank you very much. Um, item number 15 is the Dalbeatie Community Initiative, Community Asset Transfer for the former Dalbeatie Primary School. This report presents to members a stage two asset transfer application from Dalbeatie Community Initiative and their business plan for the transfer of the former Dalbeatie Primary School and the surrounding 5.8 acres of land, again under the Community Empowerment Scotland Act 2015. Kimberly Phillips is here to assist members with any questions um, and I will bring in any members who wish to ask a question? Uh, Rob? Thank you, Chairman. This is a, a, a big project for the community in Dalbuti, and uh, I, I think it's uh, a very comprehensive and uh, carefully worked up business plan. Um, and and I, I certainly uh, hope and feel it stands every chance of success. So I, mean, I just want to cut to the chase, Chairman, and uh, uh, move the, the committee go with the recommendation of the Stuart Area Committee, um, which is a set out in paragraph 3.6. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, so just to confirm, Rob, um, in terms of the decision options at 3.9, are you going for option one? Are you proposing option one? Uh, yes, Chairman, that's correct. Apologies, I'm, I'm probably referring to the wrong things. Option one, please, yes. That's no bother at all. Um, I have no other members who wish to come in, so I will move to the recommendations. Um, are we happy? Sorry, Jane? Uh, yes, Chairman, it is indeed option one, as Councillor Davidson has suggested. Councillor Davidson also made it clear that the area committee um, recommendations were set out in under 36.6 here, 9.4, 9.5, um, and, um, and the whole of that should be part and parcel of the recommendation here, please. Uh, it's option one plus uh, 9.5. Is that what you're you're suggesting? Um, I'm more than happy for that to be proposed. My understanding is that option one, um, I don't believe has a clawback, but I believe that actually the transfer wouldn't take place until all the funding was put in place. So, uh, sort of, I kind of see that as an either or. You know, if all the funding is in place, and you know, you would therefore. Um, hope and expect that the the project would have um, more success, you know, would 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 have a good success rate. Um, so just to be clear, Councillor Maitland, are you happy with what what's in option one um, in three point nine, or would you rather add something in addition to that? Well, I'm simply requesting that we we go along with what the area committee suggested, which is clearly set out. 9.4 and 9.5, and I think actually it's what Councillor Davidson suggested earlier on. Are you quite happy with that, Rob? Chairman, yes, I am. Uh, I mean, it is the um, the the the, uh, the worst case scenario situation, um, which, like you, I firmly believe is highly unlikely. Um, but I've no difficulty with it being included. Okay, so I will move to the recommendations. Um, so are we happy to consider one, note two, consider three, note four, agree five, and consider six on block on the basis that we're going with option one, including the area committee recommendation as detailed at 9.5. We're happy with that? Yep. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, I'll now move to agenda item 16, is the London Road playing field, Sunra, proposed uh, cat transfer. This report presents to members a stage two asset uh, transfer application from Wigtonshire Rugby Football Clubs and to proposal for the transfer of London Road playing field, Sunra, under the Community Empowerment Scotland Act 2015. Kerry Monteith is here to assist members with any questions um, and I will open up to member debate. Um, Andrew? Thanks, Chair. I would I would say that we go with option two, as the was discussed at the committee. Although I would add one condition, one extra condition after um, after having the community engage with me a bit afterwards after the committee, um, I would like that um, we save the we save the ability when we allow the Shaw show to use the field during the Shaw show season as it has been on that land for for hundred for hundred years or so. I would like to see that written into the into the um, into the proposal, please. Just that we safeguard and secure Shaw show's place on that land for the uh, for the foreseeable future. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you. Um Kerry, is there anything you want to add to that? Just to say uh, for yourself, Chair, that, that that is included within the context of their uh, report and the application. Any leases and uh, access rights remain uh, on the site uh, via, you know, during transfer. So, uh, to our show, if when they renew their lease, that will be kept and that will be retained within the transfer, as well as uh, there's properties around the site that have access rights and they will also remain as well as public access to the playing fields. Thank you for that clarification. Is there any other member who wish to come in? Tommy? Can I just come back on that, sorry? Yes, Andrew, come back in. So I was meaning out with the lease. So the um, I believe the agricultural show will have a 10-year lease to use that land. My worry is that after 10 years, they might not get another lease. Can we write that into the condition that they must always have the right to use that land? even after the lease is out. Kerry? I don't see that there would be any issue with that, Andrew. Uh, the Wigtonshire Rugby to, to be engaging with to our show and have engaged with them and are keen for that to continue on site. This is the purpose of the transfer, to make use of the playing fields for the purposes of community events and sporting events. So uh, I don't imagine there'll be any issues with that. Uh, from my understanding, they were looking to negotiate a 25-year lease, uh, but I don't think that's complete as yet. Uh, but it may be by the time transfer actually goes through if it should be agreed today. Okay, thank you. Tommy? Thanks, Chair. Yeah, very briefly, just to, to welcome the, the, the transfer and to say I know this is also welcomed by Councillor Scobie, who's another local member. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we're happy to consider one, note two, consider three and agree four on the basis that we are going with option two as detailed at 3.6 of the report. Good. Thank you very much. Um, agenda item 17, is any other business deemed urgent by the chair due to need for a decision? Um, as indicated earlier on, I do have one urgent item of business today, um, but before we move to consider the next items in private, I would like to take this opportunity to thank members and officers for their contribution to this committee over the last three years. This committee has undertaken significant pieces of work over that time, including the transformation programme and the review of financial procedures and procurement standing orders. Um, over the last period in particular, we've been able to make sure that the Council uses the financial available to us to support our most vulnerable residents and the survival of local businesses over the COVID period. It has been a privilege to chair the Finance, Procurement and Transformation Committee, and I would like to take this opportunity to thank officers um, across the Council who have supported me in this role, particularly within the Finance and Procurement Service, but also across the Council, given the delegations to this committee. And I'd also like to thank colleagues over um, the last three years for their personal support and frankness. Um, it really has been appreciated, and um, I can't thank you enough for that. So, um, in saying that, I will move to agenda item 18, which is the Local Government Perfect. Scotland Act 1973. Sorry, was that somebody wanting to speak? If you don't, if you don't mind, Chair, I would just like to uh, agree with the, your statement there with regards to the services for, by, by the, the staff of the Council. 
Thank you. Thank you, Jock. Um, I will now move on to Agenda Item 18, the Local Government Scotland Act 1973. Um, are we happy to consider the adoption, to, ad the adoption of resolution to exclude the public from the meeting in terms of Section 50A4 and Paragraph 6, 8 and 9 um, and Paragraph 6 of Part 1 of Schedule 7A of the Local Government Scotland Act 1973? Agreed. Okay, um, we will now... Two minutes to move in. Okay.